Stoneman Farms is a 3,200-acre fourth-generation operation in north-central Michigan. Justin, brother Jared, and father Tim Stoneman make up the board of directors. Justin was named a 2013 4R advocate. His story is in part a lesson in farming precision ag data. The 4R Nutrient Stewardship Report. Information about how the right source, right rate, right time, and right place interact with issues facing everyone. Stoneman Farms grows soybeans, wheat, sugar beets, and cucumbers. On this day in late spring, there's a meeting of the board just before a day of scouting and replanting. Right now this year is as troubling as this spring's been with the rain and the weather. We've had a lot of replant issues and uh, you know we've been on every field you know several times a week trying to figure out the crop that is there, what's left, if it did not get drowned out, how viable it is, should we be you know abandoning it if it is a problem and you know that pays pretty good dividend, dividends that time spent scouting those fields, know exactly what you got and what you got to do to address the problems. Justin works hard to collect consistent data upon which to base his decisions. That process starts early in the cropping season. What we want to do is uh, through this tissue and soil sampling process in seasons, we want to identify an area in a field that's pretty consistent because we're going to be coming back to the same area several times through the growing season. That work that we're doing this year will give us a baseline or a foundation for what we start with next year. It's kind of like building that understanding as to what we need to do from a tr nutritional standpoint to get ahead of a deficiency. That is if we even see one. We may get lucky and, and we may have a program put together well enough this year that we, we find that we're sufficient in all areas of, of nutrition, but we may find that we have some issues of concern or areas of concern and that'll help build the timeline to us well as to when we need to apply that nutrition and at what rate. Uh, and the rate will be somewhat of a guess uh, until we get through another year where we go through and apply those products that we think we need to and then we go back and check the results to the same situation next year. Justin's infield scouting is really guided by data and decisions made long before the planter hits the field. Back in the farm office, he reviewed what factors influences many key decisions. We decided that a vehicle that we would use to get a better understanding of what we're working with from a soil standpoint would be to use some EC scans or electroconductivity scanning, which is a process where they take a, uh, we'll call it a tool, they pull across the field. That tool is a vehicle that gauges the electroconductivity uh, of the soil. Um, in other words, it, it kind of is regenerating or creating a soil type map, if you will. That soil type map or that, that classification of soil gives us a better understanding of what we could expect for a capacity of the soil, which in turn gets back to our goals, our yield goals, our production goals. Previous to this process of using a various machine and, and doing EC scans, we had some idea what we was contending with. We had soil samples that we could pull that gave us a, a CEC rating or a cation exchange capacity. Uh, this EC process is, I think, just another layer to that, just another step above that. And we're making use of that. And just to make sure that we truly understand what soils we're working with. So what we're looking at here is a, a map of an EC scan. This is the farm that uh, we've operated on for years. Uh, it's owned uh, by a member of our family. These EC scans uh, that we have uh, con you know, generated here, these maps, uh, these are a great tool to give us a better understanding of how we can implement our fertilization program that really is consistent with the 4Rs program where we're putting on the right product at the right, right, at the right time at the right place. We, st we have to have a really good understanding as to what that soil is capable of taking. So this is the, the original map that was generated from the EC scanning process. Uh, what you would consider, I guess, uncontoured, uh, the data in its rawest form. This is the map that represents the seeding population for this 80-acre farm that we're referencing. 
We've broken our fields down into five main EC zones, which is very common. This is nothing unique, I don't think, from one grower to the next. Five zones seems to be fairly representative of what we're hearing most guys are using, most growers are using. Um, we pick five seeding rates for our corn. In this case, we start out at a 26,000 seeding rate and 26,000 seeds per acre and end up at a top of 34,000. The second map we're looking at here is the same map as the first link, as different as the values, and it's just simply the five zones and the fertilization program. So we got the we got the field fertilized, we got the corn planted, and and uh, we're in the growing season, and we still want to keep tabs, like I referenced earlier, as to what's going on in that corn plant. There's pretty good tools that we have that we can use to keep track of that, and that is uh, a tissue sampling process. Um, that's where you actually go out and take a piece of the plant or the whole plant. It's, it's all based on the stage of growth that the plant's in. And we can send that plant material to a laboratory and they can essentially dissect it, right? And tell us exactly what that plant has for nutrition in it. And we can develop an understanding as to whether or not that plant is happy and has what it needs or whether it needs nutrition supplemented to it. Uh, we get a rating back from the lab and it shows these bar lines here. This, this is plotted on a chart and it's showing a sufficient range that we want the plant nutrition to be in. Once we get later on in the growing season, we identify that there is a shortage of one nutrient or another. We can have a company like Wilbur Ellis create a custom blend of nutrition that is what we need for that corn plant. And we can have that plane fly that product on in smaller rates and supplement that plant along uh, and get it to its uh, level of nutrition that it needs to see. One of the uh, R's in the forest program is the right time. And uh, that's where some of these late in-season applications uh, really have value. We understand that through not only through this tissue sampling, but just through general understanding of how the corn crop grows that we that corn has a really sharp nitrogen uptake you know in other words it starts off its nutrient requirements is very minimal in the beginning but it increases sharply as it gets right towards its point of maturity that's a brief look at justin's management strategy he plans to add aerial thermal imaging this year as a further effort to farm as precisely as he can one thing that the four hours program provides it is somewhat of a game plan or a map if you will as to how you can manage your fertility on a farm or any field in a situation to make sure you're you're doing you know really essentially all that you should or could be doing in this four hours program and and especially since we've become an advocate for the program uh, that's been a good tool for us in you know back to that relationship with our landlords so they have a better understanding that we you know we are truly doing uh, what we can with the resources we have available to us to make sure that we're making good use of the you know their asset their investment for more information about 4R advocates and the 4Rs visit nutrient stewardship dot com.